Good day, everyone. My name is Florence Okudale, and you are watching the U Multicultural Community Hour. I come from a culture where community defines the people, community is everything. My culture believes that a thriving community is the foundation for fulfilling life potential. We therefore place huge emphasis on making our community strong. The show is about our community, your community. In this episode, we have the pleasure of having Humeira Jalil with us today. Humeira is the founder and executive director of Healthy Muslim Families and a Juris Doctor candidate at the University of Manitoba. For the last 15 years, Humeira has been working in the, Win in the Winnipeg, Manitoba community in different roles and created long-lasting community initiatives, focusing on Muslim, newcomer, and gender equality issues. Humeira is also the recipient of the 2017 Unpack Activism Award by the Provincial Council of Women of Manitoba. Welcome, Humeira, to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to have you here in our show today. And uh, someone who is very visible in the community, I'm very active. I am really, really happy to have you today. I was going through the website, and there was one striking um, sentence that I saw there. And it says, uh, family make up our community, and we should care. So why do you care? Why do I care? Because... Like you were saying in your introduction, you believe in a community where, um, you know, people who make up the community, we, we care for each other. Mm -hmm. And the and my belief is that this, the family, because it's the unit of a society, of a community, the stronger the family, the stronger the community. Mm -hmm. And as newcomers, when we come here, um, we are struggling to settle down, to find work, and, and put our roots. Oh, yeah. And when families are struggling, they are not able to network and, and, and thrive. And we all need support. And because I am a newcomer myself, I was a newcomer myself. When I came here, I had a tough time. Like everybody else, I had a tough time settling down. And I remember that. So when, I, you know, now because I've been here for some time, I always want to help people who are coming here and I want to make them stronger to put their roots down and, and thrive. When the family thrives, the community thrives. And that, you know, the stronger the family, the stronger the community. That's why I care. Wow, you are right about that. I was also an immigrant about 24 years ago. And like you said, uh, it's so hard for families to come in and 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 settle down and then begin the assimilation process and also begin all the learning process. So tell me, what do you hear from families when they first arrive or families that come to seek services from your organization? I think the first thing they're saying is that they're missing their own family. Yeah. Right? They've been here for a year, they've been here for, a two, for two years maybe, but they're really missing their family back home. Because... You know, where we come from, all our family members are there, our, our immediate family is there, our extended family is there, all our friends are there. So, you know, we when we move here, we've mm -hmm. uprooted ourselves. Yeah. So all those connections are lost. Mm -hmm. So they're missing their family. And um, it is a little bit difficult to, you know, find new connections here, make new connections um, so, th so they're missing their family. And the second thing is they're looking for people from their own background where they yeah. hang out together. Mm -hmm. I mean, here people are busy. No one has time for others. <laughs> like back home, he's like, just yeah. get up in the morning, go meet this uncle, yeah. meet that auntie. Here, yeah. can't do that. And it's just not how things work here because everybody's busy. So you have to call, set up an appointment, say I'm yeah. going this day, that day. So they're, they're waiting, they're, they're seeking opportunities where they can connect with people. So I think that's one of the things that we provide. We provide an, a place where people can connect with each other. So they really feel good. And then we just have these programs for them where they can come and paint, come and chat, come do yoga. So people have avenues. To, yeah, we are doing bro. Wow, Saturdays. So people have avenues to come and meet other people, learn from them. And it's those conversations, those 
uh, informal meetings where people mm-hmm. learn from each other about their settlement as well. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just information that they're mm-hmm. thinking, right? Okay, what place is good for this? Where do you buy these groceries? How can I apply for this? Mm-hmm. How can I apply for that? So those informal con- conversations that ha- happen in those gatherings are key to settling mm-hmm. down and, and, and feeling that you belong in a place. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, that's what's happening and that's what uh, families are saying. Yes. Thank you so much, Gumeira. Um, uh, in fact, as you were talking, I could not help thinking back that this is March 5th and March 8th will be International Day for Women. And I want to recognize all that you are doing and to think that, you know, you have the initiative to start this to encourage our families and empower the families. So I, I was go- also going through um, the, the website and the, all the work you do. You spoke about um, education, a workshop. Can you enlighten all the viewers the type of workshops that you do? Okay. Or you have taken? Yeah, so anything that is, uh, any topic that is upcoming, anything that people want to know more about. So I believe that we need to always hear from the community and see what are the needs. So with, just to give you a few examples, we were running services. We never thought about running conversation English conversation circles because there are so many English language programs already out there. This was, yeah. I felt that that was not a need that we needed to <laughs> fulfill. But we kept hearing from women why don't you start running English conversation classes? Why don't you start running conversation wow. classes? And I'm like, why? Why do you want to? Like, there are other services, right? There are other places that do that. Mm-hmm. But I found out that there are grandmothers who are visiting who mm-hmm. want to learn more English, but they will not feel comfortable going to English language, cl- formal English language. Uh, uh, uh. Then there are visitors who are here for, like, say, you know, they're going to be here for six months. They want to learn, but they will not be able to get those services anywhere else because they're visitors, right? Yeah. So just those kind of people and seniors, they, they want to get together yeah. and learn in a comfortable environment. So we mm-hmm. said, okay, you know what? It doesn't really harm us. We'll start English conversation. Yeah. And since we started, we had so many registrations that we had to start two of them because we, remember, remember. we couldn't have one. And then it ended. So we do 10 sessions at a time. Mm-hmm. It ended and then they were asking, okay, when when's the next one? When's the next one? Wow. So since we started that two years ago, now we do it all the time. Like we end for maybe, we take a break for a month and then we start again. Hmm. Right? So so that's something. Other um, workshops, I think uh, anything that is of use. We had um, somebody talking about um, you know, diabetes and all of that. So he said, okay, we'll bring, you know, there are so many doctors in the community. We are going to give them a chance. So mm-hmm. they, came, they came and talked about uh, diabetes and how do you take care of yourself and yeah. seniors and all of that. Then employment workshops as well. So we you know, um just how to find employment. Sometimes women are looking for employment in schools because they have kids going to school. So we did a workshop only about how to, work in a school how do you apply how do you like what are the skills that you need and then we'll do all of that so we keep listening to the community when we see okay this is a need then we will do those workshops because these are one or two workshops they're not like a series Mm -hmm. um we've done uh workshops on linkedin how do you make your profile (laughs) oh wow with people on linkedin to find work we've done workshop uh, we do a lot of art workshops as well because art is a good way of uh working on your mental health yes yes. obviously also having conversations with others so we that's something that we do very often um you know just art workshops um yeah just anything that we can find that people are interested in we will bring a workshop uh thank you so much humera because when you are speaking and i'm thinking about you know how important it is for us to look at those gaps in our society, in our community, those gaps, and learn how to, and see how we can begin to mend those gaps so that it's not there. And even though I've been in this country for, for so many years, I tell you, I still, I, yeah, I speak English, but I'm more comfortable in my own language, right? Mm-hmm. So I believe, you, I'm telling you that a lot of us will be interested in that kind of uh, environment where we are allowed to speak it, however we know, learn, and then improve on how to speak. Exactly. So that's so amazing. Thank you so much. I also, I read something. I thought I had it here written, but I don't want to misquote that. Um, 
the saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, um, on your website, it was so nice. Uh, can you read that out? I, did, I thought I had it printed out so that I can read it out, but I find out so that this is exactly what we are talking about in our community hour. How we, as people, have to feed other people, work for other people, and as we do that, our community is made better. I find that very, very uh, honor, honored to have read that and something that we as communities can look at and learn from. Can you tell us about that uh, put? Sure. Uh, I will try to do my best. Like yes, it, I it, it worked by I don't know, I don't know <laughs> how it but went yeah. off. That's okay. So uh, the saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that the best of you are those who are of benefit to others. Meaning, you know, we come with different skills, yeah. potentials. Um, you know, some people have languages, some people have skills of just communicating with others. Mm -hmm. We all have different skills. Then how do we use those skills to benefit others? All the... Right? So that's my, um, you know, philosophy as well. And, and when I have um, community members join healthy Muslim families, mm. they, you know, there are so many who volunteer, but when they join with us as even staff, mm. I tell them, you know, we... You will get paid for the hours you do, but that's because we have to eat, we have to pay rent. But the reward of helping people, mm -hmm. you know, there's no substitute for it. First no. of all, the satisfaction that you get, yeah. and then you really see the impact. You really see how somebody's life became better because of your uh, help or because of your input. And, you know, just add all of that and together to that. it's done, we... We work together and, you know, we, we empower people and then we can see the impact in the community. So yeah. that's that's how I work uh, and that's my philosophy as well. Wow. So we have uh, with me again today, um, Humaira Jalil, Executive Director for Healthy Muslim Families. Welcome, Humaira. Yes. Um, as we were saying, discussing before, I just wanted you to highlight to our viewers some of the challenges, major challenges you've been facing uh, while doing the work you do. Um, some of them are both external and in, uh, internal. Okay. I mean, that. I think that's a very uh, important question for someone who is a woman, mm -hmm. an immigrant, a uh, visible minority, right? I think um, anyone who is working in a field where you are trying to set up something, when you are trying to um, start a new project, I think we all have to prove ourselves. And um, one of the things that happened that I can say is externally, I have to prove myself that I know what I'm doing or I can do this, mm -hmm. right? Because I can see sometimes on people's faces when I'm talking to them for the first time, they're thinking, oh, <laughs> Uh, does she like even know what she's talking about, right? Uh, I think people first look at me with my hijab mm -hmm. and they expect that I cannot talk in English mm. or I might not understand English. Well, you haven't gone to school right? at all. Yeah. So when they're talking to me they and, and they hear me, they come to me and they're like, well, so I look so well. I'm like, okay, thank you so much. Okay. And so, so I love those kind of things. So sometimes when people see me and they talk to me, they, they really want to confirm that mm. I can actually deliver what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and then it, it, it's just the first time. And then obviously after we talk and we do something, people realize, no, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. So, yeah. so it's okay to overcome that. And internally, the issue is when you're working with community, people want to know if they can trust you. So first thing is trust. And secondly, being a woman, we always have challenges. So I have those challenges as well. Um, sometimes I have to, I have to gather the support of my male friends and family members. Mm -hmm. Because if, if I say something, maybe it doesn't have that weight. <laughs> but if my husband or my brother or my friend's husband says it, mm -hmm. then it has more weight. Okay, I don't let it bother me. I think I've now learned oh. how to do make it work. Mm -hmm. So I will come up with the idea. I will plan everything, mm -hmm. and then I will talk to people, and then I will 
gather all those friends around me and I will, con- you know, convince them and they know what I'm doing and they've known me for a long time and then they will take on the uh, issue or the project and then I make them my allies and that way it works. Work. But I know that this is my challenge and I have to always do it in that way. And I think it's not just me, it's women everywhere. Yeah. Women do have a challenge of uh, working in a community where it's always, I mean, it is male dominated. It, it We always um, give more weight to projects or ideas from men rather than women. Yeah. And one more thing I would say is that really frustrates me is when we are trying to make anything work and I will gather all my friends and people in the community, women in the community, and they will agree. But Women are not decision makers. Why in the family, usually they have to go back to the husband or whoever and make a decision. So I'm like, okay, then I need to first talk to you and then I talk to your husband because it won't work and I won't talk to them. So right now I figured out that sometimes even if you have a very good project or an idea or something that will serve the community, but you know, Women can agree all they want, mm-hmm. but if we have not convinced the men, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because the money is, mm-hmm. you know, so going to come from them. They will have to agree to give. And the second is anything that will uh, gather support on an issue. I need men there as well. Like mm-hmm. uh, we have to find allies and that's okay. That's yeah. fine. That's how it yeah. works. And well, yeah. I think we just have to figure out the formula. <laughs> Uh, uh, and at the end of it all is that we arrive at a peaceful yes uh, place where everybody is healthy yeah both mentally and physically right and a sad uh, and unhappy mind can never be ha- uh, healthy yes and so when we are trying to work with families you have to ensure that you walk this fine line and ensure that um you know. The family fabric is not broken yes. while trying to create some of these uh, changes. Uh, I like uh, one of the things, again, that came up uh, while I was going through what you do. So we operate from the belief in the saying of the prophet, which you just mentioned. And uh, I also, I, I find my culture also aligned with that as well. When you're talking about the male, you know, getting permission from the male, we are also from that culture, but... Like like you said, we have to find a balance. We have to find a way not to disrespect. Yes. Um, as, a, as an African mother, I will not advocate for disrespect. I will advocate for peace. Yes. However, we reach that peace yes. in a way where people, in a way that both parties, everybody is happy. Both the woman, both the man, and the children, right? Definitely. So, and, and I think that's what really endeared me to what you are doing and viewers i hope you will take time to visit the website and visit the organization and if you want to find more what they are doing and how they are trying to help women and families uh especially families um live a healthy life in 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 our community please visit their website please can you tell us the website again muslimfamilies.ca and the address is at we are located on 117 saint anne's road uh, unit A, and we have a second office in downtown in the Rice Building. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I guess um, now we are still on families, um, Muslim families, healthy families, and your family as well. And we know that in each family we have the with the parents, we have the children, and we have every other thing in between, right? And now I just want to have, ask a few questions or rather go into the children in the family, in the families that have uh, that are assessing your know, services. What do you hear from the families? Are there, are there, is there a disconnection between the, the children in the family or the parents in the family, between the children and the parents? Yes, I think that's, uh, some, and that's an issue that affects all newcomers and yeah. here. Sorry, I wanted. I, I think what I feel to add is in their process to uh, to settle in Manitoba, oh. is there a discussion, a, dis- a disconnection between the children and the parents, as well as looking at keeping the values that they come with? Yes. So 
again, it's a question where I think most of most of the families that immigrate here mm -hmm. are struggling with that because what happens is we came, we are coming from uh, a background, a culture where we know our culture, we know our roots, we know our country, we know our values. But when you settle here, if the children are small, they are growing up, right? right? They are now disconnected from their grandparents and all that, the village that was raising them is gone. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and the parents are busy. They have to earn a living, settle down. So they're not able to give them that much time. So the children are losing the culture. They're not, um, you know, they're losing language mm -hmm. and they don't speak the language anymore. They're only speaking English, right? Mm -hmm. So they do lose that connection. And then the parents, they feel frustrated because the children are not, they don't have the same values anymore. They don't have the respect anymore. Like for us, we say, well, if our, our mom looked at us, we knew what she wanted. Yeah. And our kids are like, we can look at them as much as we want. They don't care because they didn't grow up that way. Right? You know they, was, oh, they were able to ask, why are you looking at Yeah, why are <laughs> Right? So, so, so there is a disconnect. Yeah. And then. For older kids, if they come here as like if they're in high school and they come, they will have certain values, obviously, and they will have they have that background, they have the culture. But what happens with kids is they adapt very quickly. Parents don't adapt as mm -hmm. fast, even in language or you know just assimilation, mm -hmm. just knowing things. And children they go on a track where parents feel frustrated and sometimes they lose um, their. Um, there's this identity crisis. Mm -hmm. And we see that in our Muslim culture, especially mm -hmm. that we, the kids are are actually having an identity crisis. Yeah. And the parents don't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we do see cases where we have, uh, and that's why we started mental health services as well. We do, we do see cases where parents come in and they need help with their children mm -hmm. and they're just not able to connect with them anymore. They're, there's a lot of, um, you know, back and forth going on mm -hmm. so so we have started doing some programs where um the 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 kids can come on their own mm -hmm. gather they can they can talk about issues that are important to them mm -hmm. and and we can you know we can guide them in a way that we can have conversations so that they understand both the, the where their parents are coming from mm -hmm. and and how do they do, do they um stay true to themselves yeah. and their identity you know um just listening at you talking i remember when i was arriving in canada um in nigeria we live in the north part of nigeria so i live among muslims and and um i work in the muslim community and everything so all my dressing was more so i you know i didn't see anything wrong with that you know it's part of my official wear office wear and everything and on the way, the day we were coming to Canada, I had my long dress and my scarf, you know, tied like this. Because I, that's for me, that's how it works. You know? And so they were trying to, a lady was looking at me in Florence. No, when I was using my tribal name. Okay. And she's like, where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. And then, you know. He looked at me, and my middle name was Flores. Didn't say anything. I didn't know why they were looking. I'm looking at my name. I'm looking. Finally, we arrived in in, in Winnipeg, and you know, the first all my dresses were. I go to the store. I don't. I I go used to like losing tying my scarf all the time. Uh -huh. I go to the store. So even my community thought I was. You know, my husband had married some <laughs> woman from. Okay, <laughs> you know, so the attitude and everything, I'm, I'm like, no, you know. Yeah. So at the end of it all, they they finally, you know, when they when people are not sure, when people don't understand, when people don't know. So going back to the dressing and hijab today, everybody, I tell kids, I said, better you become comfortable in your own skin. Yes. When you wear the hijab, everybody knows this is you. This is who you are. And it's becoming a trend. Yes, now. Yes, <laughs> it's becoming a trend, unlike in those days. So thank you so much. And um, I understand when you talk about the young people, you know, being pulled here. 
my kids also went through that. I remember when my son asked me, how many cousins do we have? Mm -hmm. Because here yeah, you count your cousins. Yeah. Back home, you don't count. There are so <laughs> many. There are so many. many. <laughs> there are so many. Yeah. So, um, and part of our uh, your job in our society today is to make sure, is to enshrine this, uh, the families to, make, to ensure that they succeed in a way that they do not lose their values as well. Exactly. So I'm really glad that uh, for the work you are doing and everything. So um, I think I will come to the last question, and that is what advice would you give to our community, every other community that are listening to you? I think one thing I will say is every community goes through challenges mm -hmm. depending on how new you are in that uh, city or in that, um, you know, in, in that city, let's say. For example, I know that the Muslim community in Winnipeg is maybe 40 years ago is when people started to come. And, uh, you know, in the last 20 years is when, yeah, 10 to 20 years is when people really started to settle down here. So our community is still a new community. Mm. Unlike if you compare it to Toronto, people have been there for a very, very long time. It's a settled community. You will find all kinds of services, but not in Winnipeg. So whenever you have a city, depending on where they are, you they will lack services or they will have enough services. So every community should be looking at what are the gaps, mm -hmm. right? We were able to uh, start our services only after doing a gap uh, you, we, we did like a review, a study in the community about what is the need, what are the gaps, what are people asking for. Mm -hmm. And every community should be doing that. Don't just, uh, you know, let it continue. But if we don't have a plan, we won't be able to get there. So what I'm saying is do a community kind of an analysis. Mm -hmm. See what are the needs, what is missing, who is not being served. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, we knew from our community that single women... Women who were divorced were not being served at all, mm. right? So we right. started to see those gaps and then start services. So I would say that to every community, there will be challenges, but there are so many good professional people, educated people, talented mm. people, especially women in the community that are not u utilized. Uh, so, you know, empower them to serve the community. And women, like we were talking in the beginning, women are the backbone of the community, yeah. right? Yeah. So so empower the women mm -hmm. to do this kind of work. Mm -hmm. There was one question I actually, although you mentioned a little bit about it, and that is how you navigated your way, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm just wondering, and, and this is sincerely from my uh, own experience, when people come to you with issues that... um that seems to go against mm -hmm. the main value of your organization. Yeah. But at the same time, you are a public figure that your community respects. Yeah. How do you deal, go about that? I tell you an example. Sure. Um, one time, uh, a woman approached me from my community. They are facing divorce. Mm -hmm. um, the husband is threatening divorce, and of course, she wanted the kids. And um, she didn't know what to do. Yeah, they already the man is going around talking about, oh, yeah, she came to Canada. She wants the kids so that he will be working and paying her mm -hmm. and, you know, making her labeling her as, you know, the bad one already. And yet she's the victim. So in that kind of case, so that's just an example. Um, what do you do? So that you still maintain the balance and that is yes. the navigating your way. In your yes. So I will tell you that we do a lot of things, but the most important thing that I think is uh, Healthy Muslim Families is doing is helping women who are either going through a divorce or they are uh, facing abuse in their home. Mm -hmm. And there are families where women have been facing abuse for 10 years, 15 years. And they have chosen to stay and, you know, that is their, um, you know, their decision. Obviously, we cannot stand in their shoes. So, so they stay, but we support them. So the question is when there are things that are going against the values of the community, I think the most important value is to support anybody who is oppressed. Mm -hmm. And that comes from our faith and it comes from, uh, you know, that 
we need to start with the oppressed. It can be the woman, and in some cases, it is the men. Okay, <laughs> but uh, but if they are the ones who are being abused, we are going to be with them. There yes. now, we only support until and give them information until they are ready to do something about it. Yeah. Because it is very challenging for immigrant newcomer women. To, sometimes it's language, sometimes there's just not enough information, sometimes there's no support, right? Mm -hmm. So that moral support is where we start. And then if they are ready to separate, then, you know, we just give them all the information and we give them, okay, is there marriage counseling, is there marriage therapy that will work? And we will give them those supports as well. We'll make it work as long as they want to make it work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If they want to leave, then... We'll support them in that, but it is ultimately their uh, their decision. So when it comes to that, I do see a little bit of a backlash from the community. <laughs> but because I think mm. I have been here for so long and people you know me, mm. I think uh, people do understand mm. that I'm here to support people who need help and I'm not going to go against my values or our faith values. And I don't, right? I, mm. I don't. The thing is, even our faith value is to support her. Mm -hmm. Support the the oppressed. Support the one who is the victim. So, um, so it's okay. I mean, I don't think we have any issues there. Sometimes I do get a call from the community members here and there, and I deal with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and then issues around um, things that people are not very well aware of. Like there are children and who are exploring their gender identity and all of that. Mm -hmm. So those are issues that are important and they're all our children, yeah. no matter what they're going through, right? So we cannot be, uh, you know, saying stuff about them. We cannot be ignoring them. We have to see their challenges, what's going on. Oh, and they go away. Yeah, it's not going to go away by not <laughs> addressing it. No. So we have to address it. So we do it in a way very confidentially, privately. Mm -hmm. So all our services that people will seek, like these kind of services are private, are confidential. And we will give them the support that is needed. And we will get them in touch with uh, professionals within the community. Mm -hmm. There are professionals within the community that can help them with this. So I think the main thing is just to know that we are here to help. We are not here to judge anyone. We are not here to pass the judgment and say okay this is right or this is not right mm -hmm. i look at it as these are our families mm -hmm. these are our children mm -hmm. these are our women mm -hmm. and everybody has different issues different problems mm -hmm. and we have to help them so we help them thank you so much this is our community your community i'm listening to uh, uh Rumera jalil I, I just feel that listeners if you are home uh, this is for you, and if you're a leader in your community, this is your this is something for you to take home. As a leader, you have to maintain that visibility and maintain that faith that people will believe in you. I I remember you saying that at the beginning, and that um, it's very very important for people to see you as capable. And I think in our multicultural communities, we all demand to see that in our leader before we can put our faith in you, yes. in the in the leader. So thank you so much for saying that. Um, again, today we have Mera Jalil. She was talking to us about how she's been doing her work in the community, helping Muslim women, Muslim families assimilate into the Canadian culture, settle in their new home, and find their way in their new country. So thank you, Jamila uh, Humera, for coming today. It's been nice and wonderful to hear from you and all the wonderful work you've been doing. And I know a lot of communities are going through that as well. So if you are a cultural community and you want to contact her, please do. Uh, this is a forum for us to talk about how to make our community grow, how to work uh, together collectively, connecting with one another. And if you are interested in any of the programs they run, please try and contact her and I'll, I'll visit the website. Thank you.